Corporate is a great way to remain cool while still getting your caffeination. Today I'm going to be going over cold brew, how it differs to espresso, as well as giving you some basic tips on making your own cold brew at home. So the first thing to note with cold brew is you have a very coarse grind. You want fairly large chunks of bean. You don't really want it to be too fine. You'll get a fairly sludgy residue at the bottom of your cup. Also, note that it does take a while. It's not like a quick 20, 30 second extraction that you get on the coffee machine. Cobra can take upwards of 8 to 12 hours to extract properly. Definitely note with this that your cold extraction is going to taste a lot different to your hot extraction. While the hot extraction is going to have a lot of these intense, acidic, and big, bold flavors in it, the cold brew is going to be very nice and fruity. It'll bring out a whole other side to your beans. And it's also a great way to keep cool in hot days. It's not really a hot day here today. However, you still get some people that want cold coffee. It's very popular these days to see it in little tins. Fair few different companies will do a cold brew extraction and then bottle it up because it stores pretty well and the, the flavor itself doesn't really go too stale. Those sort of oils that you extract out during the cold process stay a lot better than a coffee shot that you've put in the fridge. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you have the money to spare and you want something cool on your mantelpiece, it'll start a conversation. Definitely get yourself a, a drip. So it's a, a cold drip extractor. Fair few different companies do this. They can cost about three, four, sometimes five, six hundred bucks, depending on how much you want to extract. But it's a simple process. You put your grinds in this little chamber. And then you have your water sitting up top and there's a little drip. You adjust the drip to doing, you know, a drop every couple of seconds, whatever you want to work with there, and it drips through. And then over about an eight to 10 hour period, whatever you've set, whatever you want to do in that regard, you'll get this beautiful cold extracted coffee down the bottom. Now, if that's a little bit out of your price range, don't worry because there is a really nice cheap alternative to it. The cheap alternative is to go down to your local Kmart or wherever you get your supplies from, pick yourself up a cheesecloth, and you want to put your cold, uh, the, the sort of coarse ground coffee for the cold extraction into the cheesecloth and tie it in or not. From there, you want to put that back into a bucket, put some ice and some water, and just leave it in the fridge overnight. That will do essentially the same thing. You will be able to take the cheesecloth out in the morning, pour the coffee in a bag, uh, pour that coffee left over in a bottle, let it settle in your fridge for a couple of days, and then when you're ready to drink, pour it over some ice. Maybe put a mint leaf in it, depending on what the, the flavor that you've got coming through your beans is. And you will have a beautiful cup of cold extracted coffee. Mostly be very fruity. Again, it will depend on what beans you get. However, you will have a completely different flavor complexity as you would to the hot. It's a great way of seeing the other side of your beans. Tomorrow, I will be going over the grind, all the grind, and nothing but the grind. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment if there's anything you want to hear or if you've taken this from this anything from this video. Thank you.